Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shape the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6022. Item Number SCP-6022 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-6022 is not to be visible on civilian web mapping software. SCP-6022 and its general vicinity is to be barred from access to the public on the basis of unstable ground and mobile task force Theta A is to patrol the area one kilometer around the object to prevent unauthorized entry. Due to its immobile nature, Site 6022 has been established at the northwest edge of SCP-6022 for observation and containment of the object. Personnel assigned to SCP-6022 who have a security clearance of level 2 and above are to be equipped with a firearm when at Site 6022 and all personnel stationed at the site are to be in groups of three or more when traveling in a vehicle to avoid triggering SCP-6022-2's anomalous properties. Survivors of SCP-6022-2 events are to be administered Class A amnestics and given the cover story of a hit-and-run car accident which resulted in amputation of the right arm. In cases where the SCP-6022-2 event is fatal, a cover story is to be disseminated to the deceased's next of kin and the body is to be released to their family. Personnel can view document 6022-2-A for an extensive list of cover stories to be released. SCP-6022-3-3 are to be terminated by gunfire on site at long range. If personnel are exposed to within 5 meters of SCP-6022-3-3 without adequate protective equipment, they are to be quarantined for one week and observed for potential symptoms of SCP-6022-3 development. Deceased instances of SCP-6022-3 are then to be disposed of by incineration, with all personnel involved in the process required to wear Class V hazmat gear. Class 4 Biological Hazard Disposal Protocol is to be followed by personnel at all times. Thermal imaging satellites are to be monitored and any changes in SCP-6022-4 is to be reported to Overwatch Command and should an SCP-6022-4 event occur, or when deemed necessary, Procedure 6022-DICEA is to be enacted in its entirety. Description SCP-6022 is a forest located in H.H. Ireland, with an estimated area of 100 square kilometers. Thaumaturgical symbols suspected to be related to SCP-8 have been found to be carved on the trees in the anomaly, and the symbols emit short pulses of light at intermittent durations. Another of the object's anomalous quality is that the symbols are unable to be pictured on recording equipment when they are not emitting light. Moderate electromagnetic interference is present, causing occasional disruptions in electronic devices and causing recording equipment to superimpose random colors onto the photo or video taken of SCP-6022. The object is a spatial anomaly, with some paths and landmarks at different locations in various experiments conducted. Paths also do not logically intersect based on mapped paths from earlier attempts. Subject centering SCP-6022 report being watched by an unknown entity and exhibit evident distress while in the forest, typically refusing to walk beyond about 2 kilometers into SCP-6022. However, a small percentage of subjects can venture deeper into the object with enough persuasion. Beyond the 2 kilometers threshold, all video or audio recording devices cease to function while they remain in SCP-6022. Retrieved video footage only shows a tree with a humanoid appearance in what appears to be the inner area of SCP-6022. The tree's features make it appear to be in pain, and analysis of the video has shown that the tree slowly sways throughout the video despite the absence of wind. Upon closer inspection, 
an entity is visible standing in the background, thereafter referred to as SCP-6022-1. SCP-6022-1 resembles a ram and has three luminescent eye-like appendages present on the front of its head, thought the entity's lower body resembles that of a serpent. In every instance of footage recovered, the appearance of the tree differs, but SCP-6022-1 will always be present. The footage also has a cognito hazard effect, which manifests when SCP-6022-1 is noticed in the video. The effect manifests in the affected subject perceiving everybody else to be an instance of SCP-6022-1, though this effect can be reversed if Class A amnestics are applied in the 24-hour period after exposure. SCP-6022-2 is a withered yew tree near the southeast border of the object. It is missing its right branch, which is presumed to have broken off due to its weight. SCP-6022-1's anomalous property manifests when a lone driver drives past SCP-6022-2. In all incidents, the driver would report abruptly losing control of the vehicle and driving into SCP-6022-2, afterwards losing consciousness. All such events, regardless of the driver's survival will result in the complete loss of the driver's right arm, and the fatality rate of such SCP-6022-2 events is higher than non-anomalous car accidents. In roughly 5% of known SCP-6022-2 events, the driver contracts SCP-6022-3 through unknown means. SCP-6022-3 is a complex prion similar in structure to SCP-8, and the effects of the prion has an unusually short incubation period spanning roughly a week, resulting in the affected subject turning into an instance of SCP-6022-3-8 during the incubation period. The infected subject reports encountering SCP-6022-1 in their sleep. Such dreams often involve the subject being trapped in a forest at nightfall and getting stalked by SCP-6022-1, and the dream always concludes with SCP-6022-1 finding the subject and looking into their eyes. In such events, the subject's heart rate can spike up to 220 beats per minute, sometimes leading to death. Attempts to avoid sleeping have little effect as well as chemicals administered to help the subject stay awake. At the end of the incubation period, the subject will take on the appearance of a native from the grove where speech is controlled and will attempt to initiate touch with the nearest human, turning them into another instance of SCP-6022-3-A. It is likely that the prion spreads upon physical exposure to SCP-6022-3-A and that deceased instances of SCP-6022-3-3 are still contagious. SCP-6022-4 is located at the center of SCP-6022. It is composed of numerous anomalous symbols and letters suspected by Foundation cryptographers to be related to SCP-8 and A, a known group of interest. SCP-6022-4 spans approximately 100 meters and emits a steady stream of Röntgen rays with a wavelength of around 1 nanometer, which led to its discovery by thermal imaging satellites owned by the Foundation. A SCP-6022-4 event occurs when the amplitude of the waves produced by SCP-6022-4 exceed 20 meters and Procedure 6022-DICEA is to be enacted within 24-6 hours. Procedure 6022-DICEA requires the following. Two armed security guards with security clearance of two or higher, henceforth referred to as guards. One Foundation personnel with security clearance of three or higher, henceforth referred to as celebrant. One clay sculpture of a human in a sitting posture, henceforth referred to as sculpture. One chair made of animal bones and wooden sticks doused in commercial lighter fluid, henceforth referred to as chair. One stone effigy of a human fetus doused with commercial lighter fluid, henceforth referred to as effigy. Two lighters, 
or any other device capable of consistently starting a flame under any circumstances, henceforth referred to as lighters. The celebrant is to secure the sculpture to the chair, with the guards present to prevent any deviation from the steps listed in the procedure. The celebrant is to place the effigy on the lap of the sculpture and chant the phrase A repeatedly until the procedure is completed. The celebrant is then to use the lighter to set the chair and the effigy on fire. The other lighter is a spare, in the circumstance the first lighter fails to produce a flame. After this is done, the fire is to be allowed to burn out, at which point the celebrant is to stop chanting. All materials used for the procedure are to be gathered up in the chair, along with the sculpture and the effigy, is to be incinerated afterwards. Failure to complete procedure 6022-Dicea may result in, redacted, the last such event resulting in over one a deaths from a severe earthquake occurring exactly 24 hours after a SCP-6022-4 event. Discovery SCP-6022 came to the Foundation's attention in 198 as a possible anomaly after multiple reports of iron-hating leprechauns abducting children from a nearby town. Further investigation revealed a forest with unusual heat signatures, later classified as SCP-6022. At the time of the object's discovery, numerous legends about SCP-6022 and SCP-6022-1 had been in circulation, leading to the area being written off as cursed. As such, the Foundation was able to secure SCP-6022 and build Site-6022 with relative ease. Addendum SCP-6022-4 events have become more frequent, occurring roughly once every fortnight. Expert Foundation thaumaturgists have recommended that elaborate patterns be etched onto the skin of the effigy and the sculpture in Procedure 6022-Thysia, as to appease the object for a longer period of time. Addendum 2 on H slash H Slash 202H, Procedure 6022-Thysia was delayed due to, redacted, and a tsunami occurred exactly six hours after a SCP-6022-4 event, resulting in an excess of 1H deaths. This change in behavior corresponded to a breach of an anomaly contained by Protocol 4000-Eshu, which the object is presumed to be related to. As such, Containment protocols have been updated. Addendum 3 on H slash H slash 202 H. A document was recovered nailed to SCP-6022-2. The document was made of vellum, though further analysis into its composition remains inconclusive. The aforementioned document, henceforth referred to as document 6022-2, appeared to be aged upon retrieval and carbon dating study revealed document 6022-2 to be at least 2,000 years old. The document is in Oum, a Celtic script, and what appears to be juice from an unknown berry was used to write on the document. Personnel with a security clearance of level 4 and above can view a copy of the translated text in document 6022-2 below. The document is currently stored in a low-risk standard locker at Site-19 with the credentials to retrieve the document solely with the incumbent SCP-6022 research head. Document 6022-2 All this loud noise, all this bright light, all these people, leave me alone. I just want my forest back. The final line contained a cognito hazard with the effect of causing roughly 20% of viewers to express a sudden interest in Celtic mythology and nature. Re-exposure to document 6022-2 might affect unaffected readers, though Class B amnestics are able to reverse the effects of the cognito hazard entirely. After preliminary testing with document 6022-2, 
2D class used for testing have since been gauged suitable for rehabilitation into society. The subjects, D6A and D9A, have been given the suitable amnestics and released, where they have been working as prominent anthropologists on Celtic folklore and mythology. Addendum 4, Document 6022-2 is presumed to be related to Damu, a Celtic land deity, judging from the content and the estimated age of the document. In the days after the document's recovery, personnel stationed at Site 6022 have reported heightened feelings of paranoia and soft laughter in the facility, though audio recording devices have not picked up any sounds of the like. One month after document 6022-2's recovery, site personnel have reported occasionally seeing a tall hooded figure in SCP-6022 and having dreams of being buried alive. Staff morale has been decreasing drastically, and as such, SCP-6022's containment procedures have been amended. Revised containment procedures are now awaiting the approval of Overwatch Command. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.